What if you could sit down once a week with a colleague who's a flat out warrior? This colleague wasn't a stud in dental school. He struggled. He returned to practice in his hometown, an area once labeled by USA Today as the second worst place to live economically in the United States. And this very same colleague went on to establish an historically successful general practice known worldwide. What if he knew someone that wanted to take you by the hand and show you everything you need to know, from treatment planning to leadership, to maximizing your journey in dentistry or just life? You ready to be inspired? Welcome to the Lion Army. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Lionhearted. I'm Dr. Steve Brasner, and I'm happy you're joining me today. Sometimes colleagues ask me how I'm able to do what I do. You know, run a private practice, write articles, lecture, all those things. And my answer today is it's 11.54. I've been up on a Friday since 7. So part of the answer to that question is what you're doing in your life is how bad do you really want the things that you're seeking? Maybe what you're seeking is far different than mine. Maybe you're seeking more freedom of your time. If you're hearing a noise in the background, I think my neighbor is drilling and fixing things. Sorry, I don't have time to do this later. So seriously, I'm going to tell you something, and I've said it too many times in the podcast in the last month or two, but I totally changed the things I get done each day by simply getting up earlier, which doesn't seem as arduous as it did when I first did it, let's say back in March. You ought to consider that if you're not. Maybe you want more free time to be with your children. And you don't have that time because you're always caught up doing things that interfere with that, like the work of of running a practice or the work of getting through life. So, look, I know I don't have the biggest podcast in dentistry. I don't. It's not even probably top 10. But what I do know is I have some really ardent followers that really count and rely on me because I get your emails, by the way, and I so appreciate them at my famous email address, drrasner at at aol.com. Yes, I said aol.com. So I think I have a good one for you this week. And the message and the takeaway of this podcast is going to be Running a lion-hearted practice is not for the faint of heart. You have to really, really be willing to work. And to me, the outcome is surely worth it. So just a quick housekeeping. I mentioned a couple podcasts ago that I'm starting to experiment with putting together a mastermind class. I've had a couple of you respond This is a class where we would meet monthly and you meet monthly with me one-on-one for perhaps an hour over the phone as well as Zoom meetings. And the people in the class would all be designed with different strengths to help us all accelerate our path to where we want to get to. And it's not free. I haven't formulated it all. I'm just feeling the interest level right this second. And of course, for this, you don't have to just be from the United States. I've been introduced to this concept recently by a colleague I have a lot of, uh, who's not a dentist, whom I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Last thing I want to say is my courses have never been more in demand. Of course, we are done for uh, for the spring of 2023, my next one are in the fall of this month of this year. And if you have an interest, you ought to, you ought to look at Rasner Institute and reach out. And that's not a sales thing. It's just a true thing because the demand for the courses is very different 
feeling to me right now than it used to be. Okay, let me get to what I want to talk about. I want to read you something very interesting, and I'll tell you who said it. The quote is from an athlete. The athlete was about to play game six in the NBA playoffs, and his team was trailing in the playoffs best of seven, means you have to win four. His team was trailing three to two. This is what he said. The brutality, the brutality of, it, of it, it's a true dogfight. Scratching, clawing, biting, blood, everything. And if you're not willing to pretty much get dirty, if you're not willing to bleed, if you're not willing to break something, willing to tear something, going hard, then you shouldn't be on the court because that's what this is. That's what the playoffs all about, are all about. Hopefully you will be safe, but that's the mentality. You got to go. You got to be willing to risk it all for these games. And that quote was by Marcus Smart of the Boston Celtics, who are not my team. <laughs> the Philadelphia 76ers are my team. But I'm, I even before the game, when I heard him say that, it put fear in me for that game. And sure enough, the Boston Celtics won. And I don't know what game seven is because it hasn't happened. It's this Sunday. It'll be back in Boston. But I bring you that quote because it reminds me a little or very much of the road and the mentality you need to reach the peak. I think some of you aren't where you want to be because you haven't given enough yet. Now, I don't know what that is. If you're perfectly content as an associate in your career, then so be it. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the real, the real point of this podcast is to help you find your road to happiness, whether you are an associate, whether you're a D student, come getting ready to come out into the real dental industry world, or whether you're in private practice. And I hear from a lot of you, and I know that it's a struggle. I really actually offends me when I hear colleagues that are in the same space I'm in that give advice to talk about how easy this is. Bull, you know what, man? It ain't easy. And then I looked it up and it reminded me of quotes like this, like, when you have exhausted all the possibilities, remember this, you haven't. You knew who wrote that? Thomas Edison. I mean, that sounds like an athlete wrote that. And Eric Thomas has a video. I want you to look it up. And in that video, he talks about, he found a, a lamp on the beach. A guy found a, 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 a lamp on the beach and a genie came out. And the genie gave him one wish and it was about success. He said, I want to be ultra successful. And I'm not going to go over the details with you, but the quote, the take, the take away from that, video is when you want to succeed you need to think about this guys as bad as you want to breathe then you will be successful when you're willing when you're under the water and you want another breath and you will do anything to get that extra breath that's the passion you have to feel about the trajectory of your career in dentistry you think I'm being melodramatic? Listen, man, you were with me, those of you that follow me weekly. I don't even want to go back and look what my videos looked like in January and February. But I can tell that I am different right now in terms of how I think, in terms of how I feel. And sometimes you got to hang on till you can get back to where you want to be. But I will tell you, this ride that you and I are on is laborious, but it's worth it. Oh my goodness, it's worth it. You know, I just am in awe 
by those of you that I'm able to touch and influence. I mean it. It's why I do these. You know, I, I really, it's the, it's the essence behind the Lionhearted podcast that I, I get to reach a handful of colleagues every week and I'm making differences in, in some of your lives. And you need to know that I look at the job, my job and your job, if you're the owner of a practice, or even if you're not, that part of your responsibility as a doctor, as the leader of the team around you, is to positively influence the, the professional and to some degree the personal lives of the people in your umbrella. And that can be as an associate as well. How do they look at you? Are you just somebody that puts in nine to five and that's all you are? Is that good enough for you? I don't think it is. I want more for you. You need to go back to the cornerstone that got you here. The cornerstone that got you to, even if you're an associate in the third doctor's office since you got out of school and you can't find a home. I need you to think, do you remember? Because I do. Do you remember taking those exams and freaking out to get into dental school? Like you couldn't get a C. And maybe you're in a competitive college. I would assume most of you were. We're getting all A's and B's was not a given, man. Or you were like me where you had to work harder than almost everybody else to get that grade. Some guys and ladies are just smart. Smarter. I had to always work harder. I'm being honest. I wish... It's not flattering to myself to say that to you, but it's true. Or how about dental school? Do you, I remember, I remember looking, seeing my freshman for, I was a psychology major in, at Rutgers College in New Brunswick, New Jersey. You know, the most courses I ever took were like five. And I minored in the sciences in case that's the direction I wanted to go. That's what I did. So when I got to dental school, and not only was I taking for the first time in my career, histology and physiology or embryology or whatever ology we took, I also was taking, like you, 12, 14 courses at once. Do you remember that? Did somebody just give you the, 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 the grades so that you got through the first year and second year? And then you got to go to the clinic and, oh my God, they spent like an hour teaching how to do an inferior alveolar block and everybody else seemed fine with it, but you were scared out of your wits. So like when you went to give your first block, how do I know it's not going to come out their cheek? But everybody else seemed to be fine with the instruction. And you always felt behind and the anxiety and the the challenges that you put yourself through and you did it. Then we're not even talking about boards yet and board patients and all that unusual challenges that you agreed to go through to become what you are. Did you forget that? It's still in you. It is still it's part of why you're listening to me right now. You need your ass shaken up. I'm sorry. If, if you're, I'm, I know I've already said this. If you truly are where you want to be, then all right. But if, it's that, if that's an excuse because where you are right now is an easier place to get to, then where you'd like to be. Maybe you'd like to publish an article for the first time. Maybe you want to teach at one of the dental schools near you. Maybe you like to tackle surgical implant dentistry and you haven't done it. Maybe you want to get a sedation permit. You know something? 
I found out in January of this year that you needed an ACLS permit in the state of New Jersey to provide sedation, which I do. I didn't know. Somehow I did not know that requirement came about. With COVID and everything, there was certainly a difficult time getting responses back from our state board with questions about, because you used to just go and take a day and a half course to renew your permit, but that I wasn't getting any answers, so I wasn't even aware that you needed ACLS. And when I first opened a book to the ACLS protocols, I felt like that first year in dental school, taking physiology, embryology, genetics, all the things that we had to take. And I, I was, didn't know if I could do it. But it's funny, I have this slide in all my presentations and it says, leap and the net will appear. Leap and the net will appear. What it means is that when you pursue with earnest a goal, you try, you get up earlier, you put in the work, there will be signs that you're closer to that goal that seems so far away. And I took that test yesterday and I passed it. And I see worlds from that worlds away from that space just a short time ago. I gave a course last weekend in my office and I had 12 doctors from California to Kentucky. Hey, Ted, in California, by the way, man. Ted is a doctor from California who I met during COVID over the email and he wasn't at a great place when we met. He didn't even do he knew from prior years how to do extraction therapy, grafting, and I don't think he had many much implant. It takes a lot, a lot of fortitude, at an older age especially, to say, I can be better. So you inspire me, uh, Dr. Kawicki. I'm probably not saying your name right, but because you're Ted to me. But everybody from... The young doctors from Ronnie up in Connecticut has taken my course several times to Linnell, you were something from Kentucky. Four children, four kids, and finds time for an extraction, I mean, excuse me, for an implant course, and was quite impressive, as well as all of them. From Dr. Cardosi to Dr. Al Janabi. I can't mention y'all because. I mean, there are people, and that's just my course, you guys take other courses, you can't take them all every weekend, that took time out of their practice, their career, their weekend, paid for flights, paid for my course, had the courage to, it take, does take courage to get up and do live surgeries that you're used to be doing in the confines of your comfy office where nobody's going to criticize you or even comment to go out and do that in a forum like we have here in New Jersey. And I'm telling you, it's inspiring. Those, the common denominator of the doctors that I get to meet is that they're willing to put in the work and they are accountable for where they are in life. I know this is turning into an inspirational type of conversation with you guys, but I'm just, going with it as, I, as I'm speaking, because I told you that I want to make it clear, if I've never made it clear before, that you got to pay for a line hard to practice. I had an employee come to me, and by the way, I think it's important that you are a strong leader in your office. So I want to tell you a little story. I gave the course this weekend, and one of my staff members texted me over the weekend because my main implant assistant is kind of weaning out of the courses because she's put in seven years and she probably wants more free time. And one of the other younger assistants who knows the most next to her has been groomed to kind of take over for her and did it on this particular course and asked me 
The course was over on Saturday. On Sunday, she texts me and asked me to, to, for a raise because she had proven herself. Seriously. And this person knows me and knows I've been around for, knows, knows my ways for several years now. So I had a chance to talk to her in my office on Monday. And I'm telling you this because I think this is good leadership. And I think it's how you should think. And I brought her in and said, look, I don't have a problem with you asking me for a raise, but I want to teach you a principle, if you don't mind, of life. Whether you were with me for another year or two, and by the way, this, this young lady is in college tr and trying to get the credits to go to hygiene school, as many, at least three of my assistants have done in the past. And I believe she will succeed. But that doesn't change what I told her. I said, whether you are with me a year or two or five from now, or another dental office, or you're not even in dentistry, you need to learn a valuable virtue, and that is to stop with the stories. In other words, when my main assistant left on two o'clock on that Friday, it was totally her game. And the second my other assistant left, small, unnoticeable things to my doctors in the course, but noticeable to me, started to rear their heads. Like, for example, we were missing a couple guides for some guided cases for that afternoon and the next morning. You know, and I fixed it by saying, I'll just freehand them, but that doesn't really fix why it happened, does it? Why did it happen? Or that when I said, you know, when I ask a question to Amber, who ran the courses, I always get an answer. The answer is, it's in the third drawer in Operatory 7. It is in the storeroom right underneath the gloves. It is blah, blah, or something's broken. She can fix it. Not, I'm not taking away. This person did a tremendous job. But it wasn't the same job. It wasn't, it wasn't the same job. And I said, you, when I ask you something, the immediate conversation is why it didn't happen. And a, an explanation to me as to why, does that ever happen to you guys? You have somebody like that? That person needs to learn that's not being accountable. I don't want a long story. You don't get to tell long stories in the military. You ask a question, they want an answer. Or in any, or you know, you know where else that is the case, ladies and gentlemen? In hospitals. When you are saving lives, when you are rescuing patients whose lives are in danger, and there is a team of doctors, nurses, nurses' assistants, technicians, you don't get to tell a story. They want a clear answer. And I told this young lady, you need to, to look in the mirror. You don't tell clear answers. You got a story for every time something goes wrong. And that's never going to get you far in life. And I'm not yelling at you. I'm not, crit I'm not even mad you asked for a raise. I'm just telling you the truth. Don't tell me that you stepped up to the plate. Because you, know, you had the courage. I'll give you all that. But it... It isn't the same swing as the last batter. So, you know, while we're talking about the military, let me just end with this. You remember my podcast from a few months ago. Like, and, and I'm not even military, by the way. Me. I wasn't in the Marines. I wish I kind of was, to be honest, because I think I embrace and value a lot of their traits, like teamwork, accountability, a higher purpose, System oriented, you better be system oriented in an organized office that does advanced clinical procedures. The individuals of the of the military are self-directed and motivated. They have courageous, they are decisive. That all leads to success. They are dependable. They understand that when they're not present, everyone else's job just got harder. They have honor. They have integrity, they have duty. 
And I have to ask you, in your practice, what doesn't work, which I've told you before, is not everything is okay. As the boss, and by the way, as the staff, you have to have no fear of communication. You need to be able, even as the doctor, to say it the way it is. I thought I asked you to fix to, to fix that. Did I not ask you to get that fi uh, handpiece fixed? The one where the, the burrs keep coming out of the chuck two weeks ago or whatever it is. It is already hard. The worst thing you can do to a boss in dentistry is make them wonder if the thing you al they already asked you actually got done. Or you it's one thing if you, the answer is, I sent it out the day you told me and it's due back in next Tuesday. That's fine. But if it never went out, it just, we lose our, our trust in our ability, in your ability to follow through. That's a, that's a horrible price to pay. So no, not everything is okay. Not every answer is okay from staff to doctor. Not coming in pretty close to on, on time. I'm only two minutes late. Mm -mm. I already told you how I feel about time. It's not okay to get around to things tomorrow. Like, do you ever find yourself saying this, doctor? Do you ever find yourself saying to a staff member, uh, you want it today, but you say, hey, if you get some time tomorrow, I need you to blah, blah, blah. Uh-uh. You got to change. I mean, do you understand why I'm telling you this? Part of your journey to where you want to be, a big part of it, is the team around you that you've assembled that's helping you. Maybe they're not the right team. Maybe they won't respond to this kind of mentality. Maybe they're not Marines, military. Maybe they're not Marcus Smart. It's not okay to ask them to go tomorrow if you really want it done today. And I guarantee you, you have people on your team to understand the importance of today. It is not okay for me to remind or you to remind them that we changed that protocol six weeks ago. And you don't know that? It's not okay to blame quote unquote SOB nasty patients why they're mad when actually you didn't deliver on a promise that made them mad. I'm just trying to tell you that there is strength in truth. There is strength as a leader that speaks truth and is fair. I'm also not afraid, and you should not be afraid, of stating and saying, I, maybe I didn't tell you this. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. Okay? So I'm just going to conclude this by saying to you that I am aware that what it takes... And if I was an associate, by the way, I'd be the exact, I'd have a team meeting every morning with my team. If my team was one assistant or two assistants or the one assistant I have and the front desk staff members that are responsible for my schedule, oh yeah, I'd be meeting with them every day. You will have a better day and better weeks, more productive, less bumps in the road, less surprises. So... I hope this helped you. Sometimes you need to remember that you do have, you have what it takes or you wouldn't be a dentist. It is not easy to become a dentist. And if you're not fulfilled, maybe you have not made, maybe you took your foot off the pedal once you got a degree. And notice I haven't even talked about income or anything. I'm talking about the fulfillment of your professional days, which are lead to weeks, months, and a career. I'll see you next week on Align Hearted.